Before I discuss prime numbers, let's just revise a factor. A factor is a number that can divide in a number without a remainder. So just remember, a factor is there, the F makes a division sign. And then multiple is when you multiply, so it's when you count in the number. Prime numbers are numbers that are only divisible by one and itself. The number only has two factors. So one is not a prime number because it has only one factor. The opposite of a prime number, numbers that are not prime numbers, you call it composite numbers. That will be numbers that has more than two factors. Here are the example of the first few prime numbers. Two is your only even prime number. And then you have three, five, seven. But be careful of nine. It's divisible by three. So it's a composite number. 11, 13, 17, 19, 21 is divisible by a 7 and by 3, so it is a composite number. To determine the prime factors of a number. In grade 6, you only work with two-digit numbers, so there are different ways to do it. But now in grade 7, you have to work with three-digit numbers. So this method is easier, safer for you to remember. But before you do that, know the following divisibility rules. It is, when is a number dividable by 2? When it ends with a 0, 2, 4, 6 or 8. When is a number divisible by 5? When it ends with a 0 and a 5. When is a number divisible by 3? When you add those digits, 2 plus 5 plus 2 and it ends in 3, 6 or 9. The number is divisible by 3. So let's look at this one. 2 plus 5 is 7 plus 2 gives you 9. So it ends in a 9. So this number is divisible by 3. Let's take 3 but you could have started with 2 also. If I divide by 3, 2 divided by 5 is too little. So I take 25 divided by 3 gives me 8, remainder 1. And I put the remainder there. 12 divided by 3 is 4. Now I can check if it's divisible by 3 again. Let's say 8 plus 4 gives me 12. Two digits again, then I add those two. 1 plus 2 gives me 3. It ended with a 3 or 6 or 9, so... I can divide with a 3 there as well. But I look here and I see, okay, but 2 will be easier. So I'll divide by 2. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2. It's divisible again by 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. Now it's divisible by 3 or 7. Let's take 7. 21 divided by 7 is 3. Now I'm left with 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. You have to continue till you get to 1 at the bottom. They can ask you in two different ways. The one is, what is a product of the prime factors? Remember, product is the answer of a multiplication sum. Then you arrange all of these prime numbers that you got here, the prime factors. So then you organize them in ascending order. So it's 2 times 2 times 3, times 3, times 7. Check that you don't leave some numbers out. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I have everything. When they ask you the prime factors, you just take one of each. So it's a 2, semicolon, 3, and a 7. When you want to determine the lowest common multiple, Let's look at this example. The lowest common multiple, what you did in grade 6 to find the lowest common multiple of a number, you count it in those numbers. And then you see 6, 12, 18, 24, 36. And then you count in 8. And you look which one is the smallest. So then you count in 8. And then you look at the first one that you will find that is 
the same. So 24 is the same. So the, my lowest common multiple is 24. So it means if I count in the numbers. But again in grade 7, you have to find the lowest common multiple of three digit numbers. So it's easier to factorize it. And you get the factors, prime factors of that. And you write it in Ascending order, 126 is 2 times 3 times 3 times 7. 105 is 3 times 5 times 7. But to remember what you will do, you see now when we do the HCF, the difference, when you have to find the LCM, just think that M it stands for the most, not really, just to remind you. So it's lowest common multiple, but think of most. So now you circle the numbers that are the same in both lines. So there's a 3 that side. And the 2 doesn't have a friend in the bottom line. I'm not going to circle it. Then I look at 3. Nothing there for him. And then there's a 7. And I can circle that. And this 5 is also without a friend. Lowest common multiple. I'll write down, I'll write down 1 of each. So I write down the 3 times by 7. But the most, and then you multi write down the out single ladies that's standing outside the circles. So it will be 3 times by 7 times by 2 times by 3 times by 5. Then you have to calculate that. 3 times 7 is 21 times by 2 is 42, uh, etc. And then it will give you the 630. That means means if you count in 126 and in 105, the first number when you count that will be the same is 613. 30, that will be your, L, your LCM, lowest common multiple. To determine the highest common factor, just think of that F there as few. You'll see now why. In grade 6 again, you just wrote down all the factors of 18, 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, 18, and 24 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, 24. Then you circle the same ones, but you look for the highest. So the biggest number that can divide into both. So there's 1 and there's 2, that's the same, 3 is the same, and there's a 6 in both sides. That will be my highest one that's the same. So my highest common factor of 18 and 24 will be 6. That's the highest number that can divide into both. But in grade 7, once again, you have to determine in a three-digit number. So you do the same. You calculate this way and you factorize. You factorize. But if you want the... HCF, you just circle the same ones, 3, and there's a 7. And then you multiply those two. So remember what I said here with a few. You just circle those two, and then you write out 3 times 7. So your highest common factor will be 21. That is the highest number that can divide into 126 and 105. So, for example, I added another number here, and there was a third one, and you get the factors. To get the highest common factor of three numbers, then you have to find the same number in all three of them, and then you just take one of each.